The minute that you make it transactional, there's nothing memorable about it. What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode 43 of Sales Stories in Real Life. I'm your host, Alex Bruski, and this is the show where professional salespeople share stories about their memorable buying experiences. Today, we've got a living legend here for the show. He is the CEO of I Want Organics. You have likely seen him in the LinkedIn community. This guy is a pillar, particularly in the CPG space. Mark A. Samuel, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure having you here. I uh, I hear that you had a really interesting experience buying a tire of of all things. What uh, what happened there, Mark? Nice. That was a good intro. Um, thanks for having me, by the way. Uh, there's always some fun intros. Uh, tire. So yes, you is that you want the tire story? Uh, a couple weeks ago. There was a, I had a hole in the tire, and you know everybody knows about tires. You, you're you're praying that there's it's a, within the you know it's not on the exterior, so maybe you could patch it and all that. Everybody knows about the tires. Um, they also know everybody knows that doing anything automotive, right? Fixing there's a car issue. There's a it's always a hassle, and you do, are always wondering whether or not you're getting a deal, not a deal. Am I going to get this, that, and the other? So. Um, found a place which I have been many, many times and I always have always known here in Marin County, California, it's called Canes Tires. Everybody knows Canes. Um, the reason I didn't go there first when I had the issue is because it was a slow leak and I brought it to a place right next to my office, just out of convenience. Fast forward, they couldn't, they couldn't fix it. They wanted to order a tire. They didn't have one there. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to go check out Canes real quick. I usually go there anyway. This woman there was so exceptional. It was ridiculous. I Again, I did. I wrote about it. I took a photo of her. I gave her some snacks at the end. She just hit every single check mark when it comes to how you handle a sale and or the sales process. Um, and that's it. I just got to give shout out to Kane's Tires. It was just everything about just the way she communicated, how they handled it, the price they gave me, the reason that, that they charged me that much, of which again was less than I would have uh, paid anywhere else. Um, it was just all around a great sales process. Love to hear that. And I love these automotive buying experiences. We've had a couple automotive buying experiences, but we've never had like an automotive part or a tire specifically. And you hit all the key points there, right? Probably 95% of us, probably more, don't really know the ins and outs of a car, right? So to your point, in the back of your mind, you're always wondering, am I actually getting a good deal? Are they overcharging me? Are they making me do an unnecessary repair just to make some money? So there's a highly skeptical buyer, pretty much almost any time someone in the automotive industry is dealing with that. So take us back to that moment. Obviously, it's a place that you've been going to. You tried somewhere that was closer in proximity and they weren't cutting it. How how did she welcome you, right? What was that kind of discovery process, let's just say, right? Like what what were some of those key points there that she hit on? Well, she was just a lovely woman. Um, it, she was older. It, she just had this aura about it. So I think that this like step one, she, and that came from her smile and just the, the warmth that she provided when you walked through the door. So that's step one, right? Which anybody wants to do. That's why if it's not face to face and you're having to do phone, which yeah, m most are doing today, it is about tone, right? Um, that really starts the relationship. Um, the she, she she was very she she went you know above and beyond as far as taking in the registration the grabbing the keys and moving and then having me sit in the lobby uh she called me like 10 minutes later because that's how quick they were to just investigate the tire and how she described why they were going to use a specific tire to replace it was just so perfect it was just so well communicated. And when she dropped the price, I was actually I was actually shocked in a good way. Um, it was much lower than expected. But she carried it on as far as why they were going to do that, why they were going to charge that. And more importantly, there was a follow up sort of note about when I'm going to come back, about when am I going to come back to then change all four tires 
you know, it, there was just, it was just so well done. And then when I came up to pay, she was so, she was just the, the aura, the aura, the smile, the everything, the swiping of the card. So I, of course, I came back, I brought in some extra, I brought in some snacks. I gave her some snacks. She was lovely about that. I, uh, it was beautiful. I mean, you're just transferring all the energy that she transferred to you here right now. I love this so much because this is quite frankly what a really good buying experience does for your prospects and your buyers, right? They'll they'll sing your praises from the mountaintops. Whereas again, with most of these automotive experiences, I'm sure we've all been to whether it's a car shop, a tire shop, whatever it is, they just go and do the work and charge you an amount and you're like, holy smokes, what, what did I just pay for, right? And it's an awful experience. So they kind of hit all the notes for you. They got the work done in a timely manner. The the aura, right? She was incredibly sweet. I could just like feel like I know her. Um, like, have you had any other experiences at car places, right? Where maybe you were looking for something similar, where maybe they didn't hit those notes. And what were those differences that you noticed? I think it's important to point out if, if you really think about it. First off, this is a, a big tire shop, right? That's it. all they do is tires. You don't see many women in there. Like if you were to go, I mean, like any of the, just go, when was the last time you went into a, a shop like that? And there was a, a woman who was handling it. So that's number one is most of the time you get some older cat. It's not really happy about what's happening in there. And in the first place, the conversation could be good. It could be a, could be a, a man type conversation and like, but you're, you're not getting what I just experienced. And so that's a breath of fresh air. So, so, could, you know, we, we maybe should give some homage to that. Right. Um, I, I, we, we could say, what if I, what, what, it's a good example. I brought my car in a different, you know, I brought my car in to the dealership because of the type of, you know, to get its service. I think it was service B, you know, the thing flashes up and tells you, you see it and you right away go, oh, there's a thousand bucks. Well, that's today's newer, you know, today's cars, right? The newer cars you have to, but you know, you have to bring it to the dealership. They have to do it or else it's out of warranty and the blah, blah, blah. But I don't know. Those are transactional. And I think that's a good point if this is a sales, you know, sort of platform here. The minute that you make it transactional, there's nothing memorable about it. Um, and I think that that, um, that that, you know, should be thought of as far as prospecting and communicating and articulating what you're, you know, what you're doing and, and what your offer is and, and and how you're going to benefit the the customer and the like so so well said so well said as soon as it's transactional there's nothing memorable anymore i <clears throat> we're going to we're, we're going to chop that up into a cool clip okay last question that i have because you put a really big emphasis on this and i love that cuz this is very relevant to b2b selling is you mentioned that they got next steps right of hey when are you going to come back for for the four tires right that could be kind of uncomfortable if not done correctly, right? That could come off like, oh man, they're just waiting for their next time they could charge me, right? So how did she kind of nail down those next steps in a way that made you feel feel welcome, right? And still kind of feel that that kind and awesome aura from her without, you know, kind of being sleazy about it? Well, she built the trust, right? Because that's the other piece in sales is, is trust. So how you communicated, what the value proposition is, how are you following up and the like? Once you built the trust, you can really say anything. You tell the guy to fly a kite and then you might be like, yeah, I need to fly a kite. I mean, if, if you're doing it that well. Um, and so it wouldn't really matter what she had said because she had built the confidence in, 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 in herself and myself, right? To, to, to have a, a, a relationship now, right? Um, as far as a customer. And so um, she had provided the solution, provided the price for solution, and then provided information as to why the solution was provided. So she was educating me. So in this case, which most should know, when you have a, a car that's been driven on and you do have one tire that needs to get replaced, oftentimes you, are you will hear, well, we should do all four tires. That's really for the balance of the vehicle. Right. Again, this is maybe a teaching moment for anybody else. But but if if you do it the right way, which in this case they did, she had found a use. This is important. She had found a she they had a used tire with about as much thread as the other three. And so she had said, I'm going to replace it with that. 
we're, you know, we're in luck. I'm going to replace with that. I'm also going to rebalance the tires, meaning she, you also want to move the, the back tires to the front, depending on thread. It, and then because da, 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 da. Well, because when you do choose to come back to replace all four, we will have already done. It's just the magic of it all. You put the bow on it, put the bow on it. Anyway. That's that's perfection, right? Especially for any sales process, right? It's not just, hey, we're charging this pay up, right? It's, hey, here's the why behind it, right? Here's the description behind what we're doing. Here's the full scope of work that you're getting. So that's so relevant to B2B sales. And we do have a lot of B2B sellers that are listening to the show, Mark. Obviously, you write about your Iwan business, right? You write about CPG a lot. You write about working out, right? And you're really a very positive in influence on the platform. And I very, very much enjoy following you and seeing your content. What would be one of the biggest takeaways that you'd give to our B2B sellers that are listening, Mark? Well, it could just be using that one as a reference again. She she, and, the, and they've been there for so long she does, she's not going to follow up with me, right? But if this were another B2B type of transaction, if this were anything tech related, as in somebody had some sort of CRM, they're old school, they're still like writing down the receipts. Like, it's, you know, she, you would actually have the ability to follow up with me. So, so she did it in such a way that she does have the ability to follow up with me and I would be totally okay with that. They won't. I'm going to go there automatically, but now frame this into any other type of product you're going to sell. She set it up in a way that she could have thrown me in the CRM and in six months hit me with, Hey, it's time now for you to come down and replace those four tires. And I would have been like, Oh yeah, we talked about that. That's money. That's how you sell. And so lastly, you know, you're often selling when you're not selling is how, how it should be said, right? You know, and that's how it's looked at. She wasn't, she was just doing what she does best, which is just provide an unbelievable service, right? And so when you do that, when you, when you are offering something of value to somebody and delivering on service, there, there's really no other way but to, but to win. So there, take that one. I love that message so much because in the modern day of of sales podcasting, right, and LinkedIn, it's like, oh, if you're a seller, do this, right? And it's all about like tactics and, you know, do this, do that, say this, say that. The art of just delivering a freaking awesome service is so lost, right? Like, so if you're listening, you have no idea how far that can go with your customers and your prospects. I love that. Um, Mark, you're the first CPG founder that we've had on the show. Um, so that's awesome. I'd be remiss to not ask you maybe how do I frame this? Like what kind of similarities are you seeing between call it CPG and, you know, your sort of typical B2B, maybe even SaaS world. What are some of the things that you've learned as a CPG founder about sales that you would have never expected? Just take that for for what you may. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. We we do the same thing that they do. I mean, a, you know, when I'm we have to we have to sell our product. We have to be we have to have a relationship with the buyer. Um, in our case, buyers then move desks and everything. You have to start the process over. We also have a very long for most retailers have a very long sales cycle, which is oftentimes in the, in the same businesses that you're, you're talking about. So we were really doing the same thing and it does come back down to the same, the same things I just spoke about, right. Which is offering a, a, something of value. Like, Hey, we believe your, you know, our product should be there and here's why, right. This is for your customers. And, and you explain and give all those value adds as far as, um, as, as far as why it should be sold there. Um, and then the, the, the sales cycle begins. It's how are you following up? What are you saying? How are you treating the prospect? What are you doing different? And then those other pieces, which we all need in sales, which is luck and timing. So once those, the latter two pieces come into play, you may get an opportunity. You know, you may get an opportunity. And, and, and then from there, what's the most important piece after that? fulfill all those things that you said you were going to do. Um, and, and so it's, it's all the same thing. We're all doing the same thing. That's exactly why you're here, right? I feel like so many people, you know, want to kind of cater to this sort of B2B sales and even, you know, maybe more particularly tech sales. 
And I think that CPG and all these other sales spaces get lost, but the simil- it's so much more similar than it is different. And what really fascinates me about CPG is you're almost doing two sales, whereas you've got to sell your retailers and your distributors. But then once the product is on the shelves, your packaging has to then sell the end customer. And I'll give you guys a huge plug here because I buy Iwan uh, products and on the back of all your products, you have your family story, right? It's a picture of you and your kids. And so you really are not just selling a product, right? And selling delicious high protein snacks, but you're selling the story as well. How did uh, how, how did that come to be, right? Was that story on the packaging from the beginning or what What was kind of the, the process? There, it always was something that I wrote. So there was always something I had on the back. Um, I'd say a couple of years ago, we added in myself with my kids. Uh, there's, it, it's again, goes back to one of the points I had made. There has to be something that differentiates you. And in a world of, of, of heavy competition, which is an, it doesn't matter what you're selling, a service or a product, you're, you're competing with, with thousands of others, right? Um, you do need to differentiate. So we have an amazing tasting product. Uh, we're nutritionally better than most. Um, and then there's a real story behind it. And I think if we did not perform or execute on the latter, um, it would just not be in our best interest. So uh, most do know, oh, it's that guy, Mark, and I'm good with that. Uh, and if they don't, now they do because they get to turn the bag over and say, oh, it looks like there's a real person behind this. Um, and that's important to me and my family. And that, that's an important thing. Well, you know, it's it, it kind of goes back to your original point where you can I'm not going to name any of them, but there are so many huge chips and snacks, right? Brands. We we all know the names of them. Sure. And you look at them and the packaging is just like corporate, right? Sure, they have the fun images and yada yada, right? They, I'm sure they have money who we couldn't even imagine to pay marketing folks, but there's no story, right? Like there's no sense of community in there, you know, you don't get that sense of aura and that sense of love, right? It's just very transactional. And you guys are, are kind of the opposite of that. Um, so this is fantastic, Mark. This has been a blast of a conversation. Before we jump here, you want to go ahead and plug anything with the audience? I know you've got your Iwan stuff. I know you've got some other stuff that you're working on. What uh, what do you want to plug here with the audience? So Iwan Organics, uh, check them out in a bunch of retailers. Um, there's a store finder on our website. And then of course, Amazon and Thrive or online. Um, and then I did just did a personal, small, fun uh, project on the side that's called Feel Good Cold Plunge. Um, so I basically launched a, a cold plunge tub. We are uh, starting pre-orders now. So then go to feelgoodcoldplunge.com. Check that out. I'm big into the into the plunge, uh, have been for the last couple of years, but finally innovated a product to sell. So people can check that out. Love it, man. Go check out I Want Organics. I'm lucky enough to be in Southern California, so it's in my grocery stores. If it's not in your grocery stores for some reason, check out Thrive. Check out Amazon. Um, the the Honey Dijon um, specifically is my favorite flavor. I'm definitely going to throw that out there. The Mesquite Barbecue is also fantastic. Check out Feel Good Cold Plunge. Um, if you've not been introduced to cold plunging, cold showers, the health benefits are tremendous. And Mark, again, you've been someone who's constantly been beating that drum about the importance of not only cold plunging, but exercising, moving your body, all those great things. So Mark, thank you so much for all that you do. This has been absolutely fantastic. We are so appreciative that you took some time to do this. Sales Stories in Real Life fam, we will see you next week. Cheers.